Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ, both near and far. This is Trevor with Dying to Live for Jesus, and it is my mission to seek the once saved. This is James chapter 5, 19 and 20, tells all Christians to make it their mission to seek after those who were once saved, but may not always be saved because they have wandered away from the truth. Uh, this even applies to people who don't believe once saved, always saved. They have wandered away from the gospel, and if they don't return to the gospel and persevere by faith until the end, they will lose their salvation. So this is a channel dedicated to bringing back those who are predestined to be brought back. So it's God's will that his sheep who have wandered away from him will return to him. I'm somebody who hopes to be a servant of the Lord in bringing back his true sheep those who hear his voice and return to him in these days when so many have wandered away. And uh, I set that up a little bit differently than usual because that plays into this theological topic, very important theological topic that uh, I'm speaking on today, and that is actually that Calvinism and Arminianism both have very important truths in them, and when they're combined, you can call it Calvarminianism, it is the right doctrine. It is truth. And uh, there might be some things still within Carmini uh, Calvinism and Arminianism that are both false, but those would probably be minor issues. But as far as it goes uh, for doctrines of predestination, election, and how that pertains to the salvation of the believer, combine these two doctrines, take them apart and combine them. And that's actually the truth. And I found this, I find this very astounding and it kind of makes me feel like something's up spiritually. Why are there so many mainstream Christians caught up in either one of these two things? And uh, let me get into it. So first, on the topic of election and uh, who God chooses and those he implants his imperishable spiritual seed into that that holds, and this person cannot lose their their salvation. This person has been chosen by God to persevere. That concept of election. Let's talk about what the Calvinist believes and what the Arminianist believes, and then we're going to move on to how that pertains to losing salvation. So the Calvinists are actually right on this part, but I'm going to show you why it falls apart when it comes to loss of salvation. So Calvinism says, God chooses who will have eternal life, and those born of God will persevere. Okay, God is going to choose from the beginning, based on his own will and no other no other will, he chooses what's going to happen. He chooses everything that's going to happen, including the destiny of every person he's ever created. Arminianism disagrees and says God does not choose who will have eternal life, and those born of God can lose their salvation. So basically they're saying, well, this is my body. I'm going to do what I want with it. This is, this is my life. I'm going to be the chooser of my destiny. And uh, what is this about people being born of God? Okay, well, if you're, you know, uh, we can be born of God, but then we can die of God. Or, you know, we can, we can die twice. We can be born of God and then die after we're born of God. Okay. So the Calvinists are correct here. God is going to do whatever he has set out to do. And that's because you were created by God. So if you're saying that your eternal life, what you're going to do for the rest of eternity, is in some way dependent, meaning taking away dependency from God. You're saying he didn't choose it. You have, you have an equal choice in the matter, or it's your choice ultimately. Understand that you're saying that you're only choosing half of your eternity, or you're, you're only choosing the rest of your eternity, because there's no way you chose the beginning, right? You didn't create yourself. You didn't form yourself from dust. It wasn't your idea. You didn't choose to come into existence. So I want you to understand that what you'd be saying is that you're choosing your destiny going forward, but you didn't choose the origination of your destiny. You didn't choose the beginning. The truth in God's word is that God has chosen everything from beginning to end. He's chosen the will of every single hair on your head before you were born. Before you were born, he planned it out. He planned it out. He originated it. He started it. He's going to carry, out, carry it out. Actually, he has to. There's no other way to look at it because... If you're saying that he hasn't chosen what he was going to do and doesn't know it, you're, you're taking away from his 
all knowingness. You're taking away from his, uh, I can't think of the exact word right now, uh, omnipotency. You're taking away from his all powerfulness, all knowing. You're taking it away from his, his godhood. You're taking that characteristic away and you're putting it somewhere it doesn't belong, which is on yourself. Now, you just have to meditate on this, let it marinate, and think about it, because at first, that's going to stand out to you as either very scary, very confusing, uh, very scary, and very confusing, and just, just think about it, and look in the Bible, and see if it makes sense, and trust God. Just trust God. So the Calvinists, they take that point when it comes to election and predestination. There's a lot more studying on this I could do. There's probably a lot more studying everybody could do for their entire lives. I'm not sure if this is something that's even supposed to be completely understood because it's as if you'd have to enter into the mind of God to even uh, completely understand it. Okay, but here's where the Calvinists fall apart, is when they translate this to the fact that a Christian cannot lose their salvation, because what they're going to do is they're going to assume that God has chosen them. They're going to say, because I believed one time, that's the criteria that solidifies me as someone who has been born of God, someone who has been elected before time began, and that's not what the Bible says. So the Calvinist says, a believer cannot lose their salvation, and can and therefore cannot personalize the biblical warnings. They're not supposed to. It's not for them to personalize these warnings that obviously warn each individual of eternal hellfire. On the other hand, the Arminianus says a believer can lose their salvation and should personalize the warnings. This is absolutely 100% pure truth, just as the Calvinists have 100% biblical pure truth by saying God chooses beforehand who will have eternal life, and those born of God will persevere. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take biblical truth, and we're going to let the things that aren't biblical exit. And we're going to put these two things together, and you can call this Calvarminianism. But I'm hoping that more people are going to be able to believe the truth of God's word, and to elaborate on it, and to teach it to others, and to uh, understand that God is God, and what we need to do. So here's the statement. Here's the truths put together. God chooses who will have eternal life, and those born of God will persevere. A believer can lose their salvation and should personalize the warnings. If you are an unelect, non-born-again believer, you will turn away and lose your salvation. So take heed to the biblical warnings if you are really God's child. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to use Matthew chapter 7, and let's check the math on everything I've just said, this, this doctrine that's mixing Calvinism and Arminianism and, uh, and the truths that come out of it, and let's see if we can find it in Matthew chapter 7. Okay, so this is something that uh, Calvinists are often going to use to say that a believer can't lose their salvation. Look, Jesus says it's people he never knew, therefore it's people who never believed. Arminius are going to say, look, someone who's born of God can lose their salvation. They said, uh, did we not prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, perform miracles in your name? That's obviously describing people who are born again, believers, and they lost their salvation. I want to show you why the scripture is, is showing that a believer can lose their salvation. This is talking about believers that can lose their salvation. But it's not talking about people who are born of God, okay? No one who is born of God can lose their salvation. And what it's going to be centered around is the phrase, I never knew you. And we're going to talk about what it means for Jesus to know somebody. And it's going to be the same verses I've already used in this video. Romans chapter 8, for those God foreknew... He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, okay, those he foreknew, he predestined. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. So this is saying that those that God foreknew, those that he knew before time began, he predestined all the way to glorification. He already chose these people, and it's because he foreknows them. They are his children, and he has a plan to redeem them, an unshakable will. They will be justified. Those God foreknows. Let's look at what Jesus says in John chapter 10. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, 
and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Jesus is finishing the work that God began by foreknowing his children. He foreknows them. He gives them to the Savior, and the Savior also what? He knows them because they are foreknown. He foreknows them. They are known eternally. They are children of God. This doesn't mean that when they become believers, that's when he knows them. It can't. This happens before that. Okay? My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. It, 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 it's not saying that he, know, he knows them because they believe. It's saying they believe because he knows them. Okay? They are known by God. They are foreknown. So let's look at Matthew chapter 7 again. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Okay, so the Calvinist is going to say, look, it's clearly saying they never believed, but that's not what it says. It says that Jesus did not know them. So I want you to understand that if you're a believer in Jesus Christ right now, that doesn't mean that you're predestined, like the Calvinists will tell you. That, that doesn't automatically mean that you know that you have been born of God, no ifs about it. Okay, if you believe in Jesus, you're born of God through faith, if you continue in that faith all the way until the end. We have to keep believing on the Lord, and anyone who calls on the name of the Lord until the end of their life, God cannot deny his own. Those are his children. Those are the predestined ones. Those are the ones that he's keeping. Those are the ones he has a plan to deliver all the way into the end, all the way to glorification. Those who continue to call on his name, those who continue to believe until the end, those are the ones that are born of God. Those are the ones that he knows. On the flip side of that, if you're a believer and you decide to walk away from Christ, you can be very confident he doesn't know you. He never knew you. You're not his child because the characteristics of somebody who is eternally known by God, someone who was known before they were born, is that they will follow him. They will listen to him. They will follow him. They will endure. If you don't do that, then you were never known by him. Okay, God knows all things. He knows all people in some sense, but in the sense that this is spoken, it's referring to foreknowledge. Okay, for God, for those God foreknew. Let me ask you: If God doesn't foreknow you, did He ever know you? If He didn't know you before you were born, when's He gonna know you? Okay, God never knew you. If He didn't predestine you, He never knew you. And this is what Jesus is declaring. Okay, you believe for a while, Luke chapter 8, verse 13, you believe for a while and then you fell away, I never knew you. Okay, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 2, this is a verse that once saved, always saved believers quote probably every day of their life, and they look right past it. The Apostle Paul, he says, keep believing. He says, this is the gospel I've handed down to you. You're saved by this gospel. That is, if you hold firmly to the word I've preached to you, otherwise you've believed in vain. That means you've believed for, for no consequence, for no reward. It's not going to affect you. It'd be just as if you didn't believe. Why is that? Because you're not eternally known by God. God doesn't know those who begin believing and then stop believing. They have been revealed as believers who were never known by God. They are revealed as believers who don't have the characteristics of sheep and therefore aren't sheep. They are 2 Peter chapter 2 Christians, 2 Peter chapter 2 believers that escape the corruption of the world by knowing Jesus, but Jesus is still going to tell them, I never knew you. I think that's very clear. Anybody can see in this passage, besides maybe good hope, now, that's a different story, uh, but this passage is very clearly talking about people that are worse off than if they'd never believed, and they were they escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yet he's going to tell them, I never knew you.